All right, are you rolling? Yep. Okay. When did you first become aware of Trend Stuff? Was it a pretty hate machine, or? Uh, funnily enough, yeah, I'd heard ha a pretty hate machine, but as uh, and and it was just a passing interest. I'll be brutally frank. You just said you you be honest. Another I'll be snappy tune. No, not snappy tune so much. as <coughs> that it was an interesting album, but it, it was. Uh, I think it was, uh, inadvertently, it was MTV's fault because I saw the video that you'd banned and I thought, that's really good. That's a great <laughs> video. Why didn't they uh, take it then, do you suppose? Well, no, you, that, you throw that question to Trent. Uh, I won't feel that one. And what happened is that because of that, I uh, then really got into what he was doing and then Downward Spiral was really, I thought, just an exceptional album. Really excellent. Right. So you just rang him up? That came later. That came after uh, uh, Virgin Records, who uh, my new honeymoon company at the moment. <laughs> we're getting on famously. Um, it's quite a rarity for me, believe me. Um, uh, asked me if I was going to support the album mm -hmm. outside, and I said, of course I would. I'm really 100% behind what, I, what the music's about. And uh, then I, I was trying to work out the kind of thing I really wanted to do. As you know, I kind of really like to be quite adventurous in terms of what I do on stage as well as on the on the music you know and, and so um, I just on the off chance phoned up uh, Trent's management as it happens mm. to find out if there would be any interest in Trent working with me on the tour and if I got my facts right Trent had been working for about a year or so before then on the road and was pretty tired and I think the answer back briefly was yeah we'll do it but no more than six weeks please <laughs> and and then we started talking, mm. and then uh, it just became a musical, creative process. Mm. It was really good. Uh, you, when you decided that you were going to do some, something together on stage, did you go through lots of possibilities and you weed out odd songs, or is there stuff <coughs> you tried that's not going to show up? Yeah, I think the danger was just uh, I didn't want it to be predictable. Yeah. So I would just fire some ideas back and forth, and then when it finally got to the point where we had a few songs done, yeah. I'd work on one. And then David Cobb said, well, what, do you, what do you think about these ones? Try these. And then we'd work <laughs> on more. And then I'm thinking maybe this would be better. You know? So it, um, it was a pretty interesting process. But yeah. what, kind of, what kind of songs did you try? I mean, for example, which? Well, the mentality I put into it was if David's going to sing with Nine Inch Nails, what can we do? And other than just sound like a cover band, give a spin to it that is that was something we could add to it, yeah. which weeds out a large portion of the music that was based on um, a different style of instrumentation. Yeah. And with some of the guys in his band that actually played it in the first place, I really tried to struggle with what we could do to, um, that could be different. You yeah. know? So it went just, that seemed to focus on some of the darker material. What we seem to have done is find um, there's kind of one pivotal point where we both seem to have the same sensibility and we sort of boil down the choices of songs that we've done, really represent the two points maybe that we meet near than anything else that we do. And that, uh, it, proved, it proved really interesting. Historically, it's kind of interesting anyway. Yeah. You know, it makes kind of a, it gives some, some kind of thread, some kind of continuity to why on earth we should be working together anyway, you know? And you start to realize why. You know, it's not as, cr it's interesting, you know, because the show, we've only had one night's experience so far, but what it's coming down to is that, uh, you know, uh, it's like a totally cool yin and yang thing. <laughs> It's, it's a situation of opposites. Yeah. Even though we're actually working somewhere in the same area, mm -hmm. we're actually very opposite about the things that we do. And, and you get a... Trent is a, far more of a, uh, a minimalist in the way that he structures his material. My stuff tends to be over-layered mm -hmm. and, and, and conceptually kind of... Uh, kind of m more of a texture of things. Yeah. So the two, the two, th it almost becomes musically like a, uh, like a, dare I say it, like a two-act play. There's a sense of not, I don't mean theatrics, but there's a sense of theatre and pure that you go up and down through different kinds of uh, atmospheres mm. in, the, in the thing. It's really, I don't know of any other tour like it. I don't think you'll see another one either. I should really make sure you come and see this one because <laughs> it's, it, it's not going to be around your neighbourhood ever again. What is this about MTV rejecting a video? Uh, why would they do something like that? I can't for the life of me imagine what <laughs> could have been in it that uh, wasn't fit for public consumption. There were no, like, dead animals or anything? Or no, like nothing like that. No, it's nothing English. <laughs> <laughs> when, did, when did you first become aware of David? Was it in a particular phase of his career? Um, 
back, as I just answered the other day. Um, <laughs> His mother used to rock him to sleep to uh, <laughs> kooks, I think it was. <laughs> and I think I got aware of it um, and became actively um, intrigued by in the Scary Monsters era. Mm. And then retroactively went back and discovered a catalog of um, great <laughs> music and good songwriting and um, great, great songwriting, excuse me. Thank you, Terry. Awesome artistry. Yeah, the whole the whole vibe and the way that he had mutated was just such a. I mean, that's something that I've. When thinking about your career, that's always been a, a bookmark. As just someone who thought, well, he did it right, and that yeah. was an interesting way. And he's always kept himself interesting and yeah. and took chances. So. What's what's happening on stage? Are you melding the two bands for this uh, seg segment? He's actually on my back for a couple <laughs> songs. It's, 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 yeah, he's got a Bowie on his back. <laughs> he's better than a monkey. This <laughs> But will it be, again, melding the two bands, or...? Yeah, that was an edit point. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> it may have been. It may have been well, um, yeah, I think I, 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 in a very interesting fashion, I think it works very well. It's, it's, uh, it's quite magical, actually. It's, like, it's, really, it's something you don't expect. It, it really works well. You're not going to describe it in no, detail, are you? No, no. <laughs> so you'll, you'll really have to get those tickets, yeah. I think, to see this. The, uh, I always wonder what it's like touring with so many computers that, Horrible things must happen when they go wrong, do they not? No. The thing about as bad as it can get. <laughs> yeah, we've we've scaled down to one tape deck. All our computers is now just a tape deck because we. Huh. I think the first show we ever played, um, the first song, you know, the computer stopped. And then I'm on my back, you know. Hold on a second, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And it's not as bad as when a drummer dies on stage. <laughs> I just, I've always found that really embarrassing. <laughs> This, this never know how to that tragedy. Never know how to cover that. <laughs> folk music, I suppose you just plunge ahead. Now, do you, you think you guys will work together again? Has it been that productive a collaboration? Oh, I'm very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have gotten a, a really great mix from Trent on uh, Heart's Filthy Lesson mm -hmm. on the single. Um, I don't know. I think we're. I mean, I, I'd like to. There's a, one of the songs that we do that I won't name this time. Um, that I actually want to take back to Europe with me when we finish because it works so well on stage. I was going to actually uh, work with, uh, I've got a wonderful bass player called Gail Ann Dorsey, mm -hmm. who's a fabulous singer in her own right. And uh, we were going to start doing it as part of my set in, in Europe. I yeah. really like it a lot. I don't know, it could, I think, I think it might be possible. I don't know, you know, I don't think anybody, you just, you go on. You know, no, what do you think? Um, no. no. Well, no, I, th I think if we did in, um, I'd love to in any capacity. So if it was something we said, let's sit down for this project and see what happens, that could be outside yeah, I of think being Nine Inch Nails, outside of being exactly. David Bowie's big record. Yeah. This is a chance to do yeah. something really kind of, you know, pr fairly, uh, you know, pushing the envelope a bit, something fairly adventurous. I think that, you know, we both felt that we could contribute equally to it. I think probably like to do that very much. Yeah. Is there, is there anything new in the way, you, way of staging going on with this show? Or is it, uh, will we be knocked out by, I don't know, banks of strobes or something? Um, the approach I've taken has been ultra minimal. Um, As you were saying. Opposite of what we just did. You know, I'm, I've gotten tired. The last thing we did was every light in the showroom, plus from the next showroom down. And <laughs> it was about that in a way. And this one, I just wanted to make it about um, us playing our songs. And put the emphasis back on us, and yeah. you can see us for once, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> well, this is something new for you, right? Because you've gone out with some really elaborate shows. It, it, absolutely. <laughs> so, I think we're working in light atmospheres. I mean, uh, Trent's is very stark. I'm working in a very abstract, coloristic fashion, entirely the opposite. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. the, the really two polars to the same show. And when we did it, we designed it so it would have that flow. with that in mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, there really is a continuity yeah. from beginning to end. It's strange. It's yeah. it's really strange. It's but, really strange. This is impressive to sit in the same room with David and have him open his mouth and sing and oh, actually, it's, actually <laughs> hear the yeah. lyrics come out. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's, I'll tell you what's terrifying is having him sing a lyric and then knowing you have to sing after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be quite frank. Listen, he's got no... Uh, <laughs> before we start getting to a back batting thing, <laughs> he's, uh, he's got one of the strongest... <laughs> It's like it's like standing next to um, a hurricane. <laughs> He's wow. got an extremely strong. <laughs> it's, it's holding up good too. <laughs> <laughs> He's got such a strong pair of lungs. I can't <coughs> believe it. It makes me laugh sometimes. <laughs>
Maybe that's other people to too. He's such a little too. guy, you know. <laughs> and so this this great gale comes out, and, <laughs> and he's so he's so shy and unassuming. And was, Who would have known? This like scorching demon in there. And he's not even wearing black anymore. That was. Don't count on it. No, this is <laughs> this is evening dress for him. <laughs> Is that good for you, Wilson? I think that's good. I think we can let you go to wherever you go next. Where do oh, you go just next? sound check. I don't know. Where do we go? Hershey, isn't it? <laughs> Hershey. No, 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 I mean, yeah. oh. right well, now. Oh, right now? Yeah. He's got a sound check to do. I go I'll take a bath and, and get my manicure, pedicure. <laughs> <and> pedicure. <laughs>